Well, there's a changeover coming in about two minutes. I'll take care of the changeover. You just get those reels for me, please. the changeover okay? Like a champ. All right. Well, how's it going? Well, no one's left yet. Good morning, ma'am. Lieutenant Colombo, homicide. And you're Miss Freestone? Yes, Lieutenant. No disrespect intended, ma'am. But that's where Mr. McAndrews was lying. Just like that. When he was shot, that is. He knew the person who shot him. I find that very hard to believe. I don't want to distress you, ma'am, but there's no doubt about it. I know I had that paper somewhere. Why is there no doubt about it? We know the angle of the bullet, man. We know that the murderer didn't shoot from the door. He entered the office. I'd say he was 18 feet in by the time he pulled the trigger. Well, why couldn't a stranger be 18 feet into a room? Well, let me put it to you this way, man. If you are alone in a room at night, lying on a couch, and a stranger entered. Wouldn't you take a good look at him? Wouldn't you want to see what he looked like? Yes. That's the point, ma'am. Mr. McAndrews didn't bother to take a really good look. Miss Freestone, she made the changeover last night when you went out for the Broadland screen test. Yeah, about two minutes after I left, I checked that counter. You checked the counter. Miss Freestone, she changed the projector. Did Miss Freestone make the splice, too? What splice? You mean the film didn't break? Isn't this one of those editor's gloves? Right. I mean, she could have fixed the film if anything happened, but nothing happened to the film. You see... I use these gloves because of the glue. Well, thank you very much, sir. Do you think it would be asking too much if I took one of these things for my nephew? Ah, sure, help yourself. The kid's 15 years old, and he sold all the stereo stuff to make 8 millimeter movies. When I was a kid in my neighborhood, we had heroes. DiMaggio, Rizzuto, 
You know who he's got on the wall? Uh, Francis Ford Coppola. But what we have here, it's a matter of civic responsibility. All the way down, man? All the way down. I mean, if everybody kept their little secrets from the police, we'd be forever getting to the bottom of our cases. My goodness. I'm not supposed to do this in the elevator. Excuse me? I was talking about cooperation, man. I had a case once. A man was cheating on his wife, and he was a very important witness. But he was afraid to tell me. I understand. I hope you do, ma'am. I apologize, Lieutenant. I hope you forgive me. Well, it's not my place, ma'am. Just so we have a meeting of minds. I think you changed the footage counter to place yourself in the projection booth at the time of the murder. But really, ma'am, you had time enough to leave the booth and get to Mr. McAndrew's office. Just enough time. Because when you rush back to make the changeover, that's when you must have dropped this glove by the projector. It's Walter's glove. Walter's projection booth. I don't think you have a case against Walter. No, ma'am, not the way he kept that boot so immaculate and all. I don't see him just throwing a glove on the floor. And the lab says that this glove has powder burns on it. And then there's the gun. Mr. McAndrew's gun. The gun that murdered him. The one that you put on the elevator. Our people found it this afternoon. And then we took a second gun. One that looked like this gun. And we put it back on the elevator. But we put it where it could be seen. As if the continuous movement of the elevator had jiggled it, so now it became visible. That's a TV picture of where we placed the second gun. Just before you got on the elevator with me, ma'am. There it is. Now there. That's the way it looked. Right after you got back on the elevator and came off it. And you'll notice. There is no gun. Not anymore. Because you got rid of it. But this gun, this is the gun that you murdered him with. Just one more thing. <laughs>